O.G. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about a paper called Scripted Collective Consciousness, Shared Intelligibility, and Living Together, and this is featured in The Map is Indestructible, Volume 2 of The True Isn't the Rational. This is going to be talking about how socially we tend to create and emergently create uh, scripts on right action, what we should do, and also it is something that can arise that we can wonder if the people around us are organizing their actions according to. So, for example, if you watch a television program about a person who say visits Uganda to start an orphanage and then you find out someone is doing the same thing in real life you might wonder if they're going because they believe it's the right thing to do or because they saw it on television and realized that it was something that could gain them social status so we start to wonder if they're following a script or not um, you know, there's also ideas that we've heard like it's good to love your neighbor, it's good to take care of others, it's good not to lie, and all of these can feel scripted. Um, all of these can feel like things people do not because they believe in them, but because they know it's the script they ought to follow. Now, scripts are going to be very similar to givens. You can kind of think of them as the social directions that follow from givens. Um, so givens and scripts are really tied together, but I do think scripts are different from givens, even though givens tend to um, emerge to scripts and givens are talked about all throughout um, belonging again, because a script can emerge simply um, socially thanks to the internet, thanks to political programs, thanks to expectations. They don't have to be given. Given are things you can't know about. In fact, a script is something that becomes a script precisely because you question it. You kind of wonder, oh, are people doing this because it just follows the script? I would say also that a reason why a distinction between scripts and givens seems needed is because you can question a script and the script still function. You can say, oh, they're just saying education matters as a politician because they're supposed to. And yet, that doesn't necessarily mean they don't mean it, or it doesn't necessarily mean that education is valuable. You can, it's more of a matter of authenticity, whereas givens is a metaphysical framework. Um, so scripts and, and givens are not the same, even if within givens there are lots of scripts. So, for example, like we gradually learn that if you want to sound like you're bipartisan, then you have to start your sentence saying something about the following of, I'm neither, neither a Republican or a Democrat, however, etc., etc. You know, you have to start your sentence saying, I'm neither Republican nor Democrat, or I don't always vote Republican, I just vote for the, the best candidate, because that's part of the script. You know, it's, it sends a signal that you're bipartisan, or at least you know the rules of the society where you're supposed to not be Republican or Democrat. You know, it, you, it, you, you know it, it doesn't actually necessarily mean you're not a hardcore conservative. But it does, it does signal a kind of script that's supposed to be followed. So again, even though givens and scripts tend to follow one another, they don't necessarily follow another. And in fact, you know, it seems today as givens have collapsed that there are more scripts than ever before. And this is also going to be due to the internet, um, globalization, information technologies, and so on and so forth that uh, result in there being more and more scripts on people thinking that people are only saying what they're saying because they saw it on TV or they saw it on television or they heard someone else say it. Um, and scripts may be running in to fill the gap, the void left by the loss of givens. Um, uh, but unfortunately, they don't work like givens because scripts are ambiguous. You, you're not sure if the person means what they're saying or not, if they're just following a script or not. So it creates this existential anxiety when a key function of givens is to remove existential anxiety. But this would also suggest that ideology in the book, The Map is Indestructible, is going to talk about maps and ideology and the similarities, but also how the word ideology is hard to use now without political and socioeconomic connotation. Um, so I'll talk about maps, but it's quite, quite similar. Um, and I don't think anything the book says Zizek would disagree with, with what Zizek talks about regarding ideology, which I'm, I think Zizek's thinking on ideology is invaluable. Um, and it would seem that scripts is a kind of ideological, is one form of ideology, one manifestation of ideology, or what I'll call internally consistent systems that tends to run in to fill the gap left by givens, um, or at least to exist without givens, Whereas previously they were enforced by givens, today they're trying to cover the gap, the hole left by the loss of givens. I don't think they succeed. Anyway, anyway, Bernard Hankins, he has a wonderful talk where he says how words frame arguments. 
And he, he, he notes that often before people start a discussion, there's already a framework in place in which people are locked. The conversations usually entail a pre-ground from out of which the whole discussion unrolls. Everyone knows the script uh, which unrolls, and if we don't follow it, we are violating the, ru- the rules. So for, for Bernard Hankins, like words themselves entail frameworks like they, they just kind of bring, almost like you pull out the monopoly board is the example it gives and you start playing so for example when i talk about the abortion debate everyone says okay okay i'll be pro-life you'll be pro-choice and you know i'll be pro-life and talk about murder and you'll be pro-choice and talk about incest you know and there are these kind of responses we expect um to follow from the conversation they kind of come pre-packaged uh, when the debate comes up. And so, you know, it, it brings to mind Wittgenstein's language games. And it's as if topics entail their own board that comes with them. Um, why can't we think beyond pro-life and pro-choice? That you could, you could think of more categories. And yet it becomes very difficult because abortion as a topic brings a kind of script, a kind of board, a kind of box. The paper will also allude to the extraordinary um, essay by David Foster Wallace called Up Simba. That talks about a black box that uh, McCain, the politician, was stuck in. You know, this is a man who in the military was imprisoned and tortured. And yet because of a military code did not choose to leave early. And so there's good reason to think he's all authentic. But once he enters the the political campaign, you can't tell if he's real or not. And and basically this kind of problem as a, could be what we're all in today. We're all in these kind of black boxes, these scripts, and it's not clear what's authentic and what's not. And when we deal with ambiguity like this, um, we might find ways to escape the ambiguity, say through turning to conspiracy, totalitarianism becomes very, very tempting or becoming very harsh in our judgments. But anyway, what, what, what Bernard is getting at, Mr. Hankins, is that in words come frameworks. And we can think about, you know, if you talk about Obamacare, pro-Obamacare, you know, anti-Obamacare, climate change, all these things kind of bring with them uh, frameworks. And in the very act of talking about the topic, it's almost like there's an indirect signing of a social contract to speak within the language that's already pre-existing of that topic. And so then you get very um, stuck. Uh, you know, there are also like certain phrases, structures of sentences, forms of paragraphs that come to signify, I'm reasonable, I care about you, I'm a monster, I hate you, so on and so forth. Like there are just, um, there, you can say, for example, we all come to know that saying this is just a debate tactic signifies that a person is engaged in a debate ta- the tactic. We all come to know that I'm not just saying this means a person might just be saying, you know, something he or she really doesn't uh, believe. Ironically, the person might be saying that to signal... Um, that they mean what they're saying, and yet once we kind of think of it as a script, it ceases to function that way and can actually function the opposite way. So there's a way in which scripts organize human action and are very needed in that way, but then there's another way in which scripts create ambiguity that makes it hard to engage in human action and hard to relate um, to human action. Um, We may also be incentivized to spot scripts that are not there because we're very cynical. Um, and we associate cynicism with being more reliable and true. This is partly due to the death of skepticism, where skepticism and disbelief are conflated. So the cynic is seen as being more true. And if we see scripts everywhere we look, even if they're not there, but they're going to be somewhere, and there are always going to be some degree of scripts because people have to organize their actions. So there's always grounds for the cynical critique, which will always be accurate. But that wouldn't necessarily mean the the cynicism is helpful or more true. Um, Now, again, maybe there's more inauthenticity than ever before. But that that identifying that alone, um, just because you see scripts, may not necessarily follow. Someone could say something following the script and mean it. This is the issue. The script creates... Um, ambiguity. It it could work either way. And that ambiguity is critical because a society that is full to the brim with ambiguity creates anxiety and anxiety makes maps internally consistent systems um, very, very tempting. And at this point, the paper is going to clarify, we can't assume that all scripts are bad. Um, If there are no scripts, if there are, which would, you could look at as if there were no sort of ways that people organized their lives or understood one another, it would be, it would be chaos. Um, so social scripts, kind of ideas of how we should live without these things, things might be very, very chaotic. We need scripts to organize activity um, and intelligibility, but of course that means we require an intelligibility that risks trapping us 
if we get rid of scripts, then everyone has to choose what they do by their own choice, and that would require a world of absolute knowers, Nietzschean children, so on and so forth, and that's very, very difficult and gets us into belonging again, and ultimately the address. Uh, the end of the paper, we'll talk about Bolgiard, who talks about the real is dead. We can't, you know, it is now impossible to isolate the process of the real or to prove the real. And that's indeed what occurs with scripts. And so this would also suggest why scripts don't replace givens, because they create ambiguity. We know there are scripts, um, but just knowing the scripts doesn't mean they go away, whereas givens go away when you know there are givens. The givenness is no longer there. The script can still be present. Um, and it can be followed authentically or inauthentically. So the script tends to multiply with the internet, and it may multiply, especially when there are no givens. Um, and so the script increasingly comes to define everyday life and what people do, uh, the performance, they are performative, which also follows in an intentionalism economy, as Alexander Bard will talk about. And so the script defines everyday life. And if indeed the script creates ambiguity, that creates anxiety, that's going to make the temptation of, um, of, uh, to of maps and internally consistent systems all the greater, which will be a main concern of the map is indestructible. For more by OG Rose, please visit ogrose.com, Twitter, Anchor, Instagram, YouTube, so forth and so on, and thank you so much for your time.